I'm Callie Crossley, radio and television host, interviewing Lovely Hoffman, star who plays Seeley in the Speakeasy Stage Company's production of The Color Purple. Let's talk about your early musical career. Okay. Um, tell me about it. Um, so I started singing pretty young and really started to take it serious when I was nine years old, <laughs> singing in church. Um, Cause my father's a bishop, as I said, he's from West Africa. So I started singing in the church and then um, since from nine years old, I was, I was singing all the time. Throughout high school, I was in uh, um, a group we, we sung all throughout Boston. And then when I got to college, um, myself and my manager decided to um, start our own record label. So we went and created, used our dorm as a music studio. And we recorded songs, we wrote songs in the dorm. So that's how I really got my start. I, I guess I was inspired by other musicians, Russell Simmons and um, Master P. They were people who, even Puff Daddy, they you know, took matters into their own hand and kind of started their own record label. We started our own music, our label, we published our own music. So that's really how I got started. And even to this day, I'm still working under the same record label, 100 Decibels Music Group. How would you characterize your singing? What kind of singer are you? I would characterize myself as a soulful singer, an R&B singer. That's how I would characterize my music. And now a Broadway singer. <laughs> <laughs> Musical theater you're singing singer. Broadway yeah. tunes, right? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So tell me about what really drew you to acting. Well, this is interesting because this, this I've been singing all my life, but this is actually my first like major acting role. Um, so I mean, I, and particularly The Color Prep, I was really drawn to the story because when I was young, I watched the movie. And um, I, I loved the movie when I watched it when I was young. And then in Boston, there's not a lot of opportunities for actors of color to tell their story. You're usually you're part of someone else's story. So um, when I saw the posting for The Color Purple, my, my manager um, showed me the posting. I was excited to be part of the production and I, would, I was just happy to be part of it. And when I came in and the director asked me to sing for the lead, Silly, um, I was really taken, taken aback by his request, but I'm a big person who believes in opportunity. So I said, I'm gonna just do my best. And after the third audition, he offered me the role. So I said to myself, okay, this is gonna be a lot of work because I, you know, I, am, I, I did go to college, but I didn't focus on acting. I focused on political science and then I got my master's in education. So um, when I came for the third audition call, I had to do some reading and I had to sing. And when he told me I was casted, I was just like, I'm gonna have to definitely make sure I'm prepared so that way I can um, really um, show the role of Silly with Truth and really move people by the story, silly story. So I- But you had acted before a little bit. Yeah, I did. I did Amos Behaven. Mm -hmm. Amos Behaven is all singing, but you're singing while you're acting. Mm -hmm. But you're not, there's not a lot of dialogue. So it was more comfortable because you were a singer. Absolutely. Okay. So right. actually, I, I was drawn to acting through music, musicals. Yeah. So uh, can you see yourself doing, because a lot of this is dramatic, yeah, just be, doing dramatic. a dramatic piece with yeah. no singing at some point? Absolutely. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because I'm always looking for musicals because I love singing, I love music, but there is a lot of uh, pressure in doing musicals because you have to make sure that like, you're healthy all the time. You can't, it's hard to perform if you're not healthy. So with acting, I'm, I'm really finding that I really, really enjoy it. And I, actually the second act of The Color Purple, which um, Silly does a lot of acting, not Silly, but w which I do a lot of acting and Silly's, you know, talking, speaking more and she's telling her story more. Um, I enjoy it, I really do. What is it about acting that really makes you feel alive? Because that's what art does for artists. Right. <laughs> well, for, for The Color Purple particularly, I really like The Color Purple and the story behind it because I connect so much to the story. Um, when I was young, I did not live with my family. Um, I, went from, I was moved from home to home, and then when I was 11 years old, I was actually adopted. In the story of Silly, she's actually removed from her sister 
um, Nettie, who's like her only love. And those are some of the experiences that I can actually relate to. So I really like to, I enjoy the story of Silly because I connect to it so much. And it brings me back to times in my life where, you know, they would, I had to deal with a lot of challenges just like Silly. But then like Silly, who's resilient and she's able to um, overcome and she becomes stronger because of her experiences, I have as well. And I think that's what really um, connects me to the story of Silly and acting in this, in this show. I see myself in the future acting and doing plays or musicals that really um, connect to who I am as an individual. I'm someone who is, of course, an African-American young lady who loves African history, who loves the history of black people. And I want to be part of plays that help to tell many of those stories. Did you know the story of The Color Purple before this? I saw the movie. And once I was casted, I read the book because I felt like it was important for me to approach this character with truth and to just to figure out like, for me, in order to approach it with truth, it's about me being able to connect to seeing in what ways do I connect to the character. So um, through reading the book, I did learn more about the story, more about the backstory, because the movie can only do so much because it's like two hours long. But the book really gives you a backstory of Silly, and then I was able to um, do research on Alice Walker and get her perspective as to why she wrote this story. And I became really inspired and I really became more passionate and excited about doing it. Initially, I was like, oh man, like, you know, I was aware of the controversy around the portrayal of, of black men in the production. But once I read the book, I've, I've me personally, I found that there was a lot more to the story. What, what, was there any difference between when you first saw it, you were much younger, yeah. never thinking it would have mm -hmm. any meaning in your life except mm -hmm. as a viewer. Yeah. And then when you're cast in the role and you yeah. read the book, did you take away different things? Do you remember Absolutely. having a, a certain feeling when you yeah. first saw the movie and then after having read the book? Yeah, when I, when I read it, I was a lot younger, um, probably in my teens. And I think like, like most people, I, a lot of the important themes such as, you know, strength, redemption, spirituality, those are the things I didn't really see. When what I did you see? When I, when I was younger, I saw, I guess, the surface level things that most people see. Oh, you sure is ugly. And, you know, the beautiful African features that Whippy Goldberg has, it was, some of it was kind of comical in terms of like, oh, you sure is ugly. And the way she was treated and in the whole hand scenes, even if you look at sitcoms today, people, st you know, make fun of those scenes in the movies, but they're, they're so powerful and they have such a different meaning for me. So now I see it more as a as silly spiritual journey. You know, she starts off having a very, because of her experiences and because of, um, of course, that time period, she has a very limited perspective of what God is, and I would, I would more consider her more religious, you know. But then as the story goes on, and because of her experiences and her conversations with Suge Avery about like how God is, you know, not just someone who's in this, you, you only can see him in church, but in, or um, he's this white person that, you've, that has been imposed on you, more so God is, is, is everything. God is the earth. God is much more broader than you, than you know he is. God is in you. And much broader than organized religion, per se. Much broader than organized religion, absolutely. And that, that, that resonates with me, too, because I think that for me personally, growing up, my father being a bishop, you know, from West Africa, and then me traveling to Africa and actually seeing some of the, even in Africa, the images that are presented to the, to, to the um, natives, the indigenous people of Africa, and saying like, wow, like, to me, I find strength in God, knowing that God represents me and he looks like me. So that's something that, you know, that I've come to realize as I've, I've, as I've gotten older, and that's something Silly has, I think Silly comes to understand as well. Um, it's interesting in the book that it, when you think about it, it's really set in a religious context, except Absolutely. Alice Walker is not the author. Uh, I mean, she's not particularly a fan of organized religion. No, she's not. So it's kind of interesting. And that's to what see. the book's about, she says. It's yeah. a spiritual journey before anything else. But, it's, uh, but, but here is Celie finding her voice, if yeah. you will, through writing letters. Mm -hmm. She wasn't an educated woman. No. 
Uh, but she writes letters to God, to God yeah. for most of the play, and yep. then switches to, she switches to, to writing to writing to to Nettie. And she forsakes God for a while. She's just kind of like, you know, I've been praying to you my whole life, and and what you know, what have you done to me? She she stops talking to him. She stops communicating with God, and that's when she begins to talk to her sister Nettie. Did you think it was interesting that um, she decided to write to God particularly? She could have kept a journal. Right. You know, and just kept that yeah. to herself. But for her, this was this was very important. Yeah. And I'm wondering what you think about that as a part of her character and 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 who she was. Yeah, I think. Well, the story is, starts off like in the early 1900s, so it's not. Miss her husband, Mister's father, he talks about how he was a slave, basically. So I think when you look at that time period and you think about like religion. And spirituality, I think it was very much an important part of the lives of, of African people in America at the time. An anchor. Yeah, it was an anchor. It was a way to, it was, it was their, basically a driving force. It was that foundation. So I, I, I don't find that so surprising considering the time period. But um, I think one of them, I think in terms of the, trans, the, you know, the transformation that Silly makes, one of the really funny parts of the book I was, I was actually thinking about it last night, um, was when Suge was talking to, in the book, Suge was having a conversation with Silly, and she asked Silly, what do you think God looks like? And Silly talks about how God is white, blue eyes, the whole, you know, the God that she, she's been given. And then she says, well, you, she, she says, this is not verbatim, but she does, she says something like, Sophia was beat, was beat and abused by the mayor. He's white, he didn't listen. So why, why, how would you expect someone, a white God, to listen to you? No, if you look at this time period, they, they don't listen to us right now. You know, so I thought that was very, a very, very interesting um, connection that Shook made in the story. I think I've seen the movie, I've read the book, and mm -hmm. now the musical, I've seen it twice on Broadway with Fantasia, actually, yeah. and now this. This, by the way, I believe is as good a production really? as in New York. It's, it's really blessing. very fine production. Thank you. But. For for me, mm -hmm. and it's more emotional than the book really? or the movie. The the musical. The musical is more emotional, which you would not think it would be. Wow. And I put that at your feet and mm. and ask how is it that you're able to because there's some very heavy yeah. uh, scenes going on here, right. some very heavy things going on, and yet you right. have to sing about them. Right. So how are you able to sort of get to that? that place of pain, because there's layer exactly. upon layer upon layer exactly. of pain in this book, right. and especially for Celia. Absolutely. It is emotionally challenging to, to have to play this role every night. And actually, I was looking at an interview with Fantasia. I think I was reading an interview about Fantasia and, and her playing this role. And one of the things she spoke about was how, how much of a challenge it was for her to I think she even has, she stopped doing the Broadway run at one point because she said it was so emotional for her. And I feel the same way. Um, the way I've been able to balance it is I've improved over time because when we, at rehearsals, it was kind of hard for me to like, to um, find that balance where I was able to like say, this is art, I'm presenting it, but I still got to make sure that I'm in character and I don't break it because I need to focus on telling the story so that way the audience can, you know, be part, understand the story and, and, and um, really enjoy the story, but it's a challenge, it, it is a challenge for me. And some of the ways I've been able to balance that is stay to myself a lot. I do, and during intermission, I'm, I'm sitting alone sometimes, so I can just kind of stay in character and just kind of like, just recall that, again, being able to connect to the character by recalling the times in my life where I felt the same thing Silly has felt. Being called ugly every night. I know what I know. That's that's like as a as a child, not feeling beautiful, you know. Until I, it wasn't until I got older that I really appreciated my beauty and the way God made me. Being called ugly every night to singing that song, "Dear God," and you know, yeah, it, it's a lot. I was thinking to myself that um, to listen to someone uh, call you ugly, even in a in an artificial setting like this, um, in order for you to get to the place to to think you are, yeah. so because that's what you have to portray of yeah. Celia at the beginning. Yeah. 
you have to have either had that experience yeah. or you're confident enough to know yeah. I am not. And yeah. after all, your name is lovely. <laughs> so I would think yeah. that, is there both, are there both things going on? I, it, they're both going on. Cause I think, cause when I was young, you know, being darker skin, not looking like some of the girls in the music videos and some of the models we see in the magazines, um, having curly hair, you know, beautiful hair, just really not understanding um, beauty. But as I got older, and again, just me reading, you know, me traveling, I've traveled to Africa a couple of times, and just, you know, really learning about my heritage and where I come from, and how high cheekbones are beautiful, you know, and all those things, I've, I've come to really appreciate myself. So in order, so it's both. I don't know if, if, if I was younger, I would be able to do this role when I was feeling those, that way. But now that I'm older, I, I can. When I took on this production, I said, I want, to, I, want to, I want two things to happen. I want to do my very best, and I made sure I prepared to do so. I worked really hard to make sure I had all the lines memorized, and so that way when I came to the, to the rehearsals, I can now begin to get in character once I connect with the other um, cast members. But also, I wanted to move people. Um, and I think that God has allowed both to happen. And I just, I ask that he continues to strengthen me. He, she, she continues to strengthen me so that way I can continue to do that. This is such a, being part of this production is just, it's not only been moving for people who've come to the show, but also for myself, because it really has allowed me to reconnect with God as well, because for a while, you know, you know, I still, you know, have, I have struggles when it comes to like God, divinity and organized religion and where we, where we used to be and where we are now. So, but this, this, this is like a, a rites of passage for me as an actress. You're operating on so many levels. So if you're <laughs> reconnecting with the spirituality through <laughs> what's happening in the play yeah. and the spirituality that, that Seely taps into mm -hmm. eventually and so, and Nettie, and actually really all of the mm -hmm. members of the cast and her, yeah. her immediate family. And then you're tapping into that pain yeah. um, that allows you to portray that part of Celie. Yeah. And then later on in the play, you're tapping into that joy yeah. of knowing yourself as a full person. That's right. But that's yeah. a big arc for anybody <laughs> to carry along the way. It and is. it really, I mean, there is no being removed. You really yeah. have to be in it you every in it. every moment. I've not looked at any of the reviews. Mm. <laughs> I've not. They're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know. But for two reasons. One is I don't want it to. I'm a very sensitive person because, and I'm very connected to this musical, and I want to make sure again that I that I approach it every night in a um, in a very respectful way, and I don't want bad reviews to 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 um, influence my performance. I don't want necessarily really good reviews, I guess, to influence my performance because I want to, I think that's the best way for me to focus on the work. Like every night I want to, I want to get better. Every time I do the show, I'm thinking about ways how I can deliver this work um, even better than I did the, the, um, in the past performance. So that's what I want to focus on. I want to really focus and then afterwards I can breathe and look at the reviews and say, this is what they said. Okay. But this, but I also know what theater goers are saying and what people who have come to the show have said which has been so moving and it's very inspirational. From a technique standpoint, because you know, aside from the integrity that you have brought to the, to the role, what about being a musician mm -hmm. and a singer? Yeah. Were you able to, aside from just the singing part, now, yeah. so I mean put into the acting part, yeah. what are the characteristics that maybe can be transferable that helped you? Yeah, well, it's interesting because um, when I, I did my third audition with a director. He says to me, so many people came in here and sang the song. He said, but what I like about you, Lovely, is that when you sang the song, that I wasn't necessarily performing it, but I was telling the story and it wasn't like too much. And that's something that I think, even as a musician, 
he said that I did well in the audition, but that was something that stuck with me and that I said that I need to make sure that I, that I do that while I'm acting as well because performing a song and performing a musical is, 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 could be different, you know? Um, because I, I like to, with some of the songs I sing, I would, I kind of look at them almost as dialogue, you know? Like when I sing the Dear God song, that song, I'm like, every night I'm like, once I get back that, get through that song, I'm like, okay, oof, okay, the next part of the show. But that Dear God song is just like me talking to God, questioning God. It's a one-way conversation, but I definitely have to make sure that I'm not just performing it for the audience so that way they're impressed, but it's also like for them to feel what I'm feeling when I'm talking to God. Well, we feel it because yeah. you're, you're crying, you're emotional, yeah. you take us there, which mm -hmm. is the, the job of an yeah. actor and, and a singer. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because people will say, like if you watch um, American Idol and the critique, yeah. uh, this is going to sound crazy, but the <laughs> critique from a lot of those young artists is that you're just performing, but I don't think you know what the words mean. Yeah, that and so is what when, I So here you are as a singer and yeah. you've had to right. tell the story in the song right. prior to this. So it seems to me that it, that gives you a good, strong foundation for right. both the acting part right. of this it does. and the singing part. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's interesting because even some of the songs, I, at home, I just actually just looked at the lyrics or just kind of performed the songs without singing. So, for example, um, there's a song where when Sophia comes out and she's basically telling Harpo, like, you're going to choose me, your dad, let's go. And then I was, I was like, when I looked at the lyrics of the song, I, I didn't really, un the lyrics of the song at first, it was just, I was just singing it. But then I had, I had to go home and look at it and say, okay, dear God, I love this woman, my friend Sophia. Like, silly, like admiring this woman. She's never seen a woman stand up like this and like just be so outspoken and so confident and so um, sh sure of herself. So how do I, that's not a typical song that, I'm used to singing, like, I'm used to singing about love and my experiences, life experiences, but like, to sing about something like that, you definitely have to kind of like, think about how you're gonna convey it so that way the audience can kind of feel like what you're feeling. How do you yeah. know when you've connected to the audience? Yeah. I'm a person who's big with energy, and I guess I just feel it. Cause like, if I'm feeling it, I'm, I think you're feeling it. Right? Like, I'm singing, I'm here, and I'm giving my all, and I'm um, giving my heart, and I'm crying. I, I, hope that you, I hope that you're moved. What about, let's talk about the controversial aspects of this, because okay. that's, that has remained, whether it's musical, yeah. movie, book. Mm -hmm. um, and, it's, and it's a couple, two parts. Actually, the musical brought out one of the controversial aspects of it that was not brought out in the movie, and that was the whole relationship between Suge Avery and Seeley. Yeah. Um, and Alice Walker, the author, was mm -hmm. very unhappy that it, it wasn't brought out because uh, yeah. she thought it's a very important relationship. I agree. So that often also ha has mm -hmm. a reaction from the audience because they're not prepared for that either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Particularly yeah. in a play about African Americans, that's not often portrayed. Right. And how has that left you? I mean, how did you feel about that as part of the aspects of the book and the response from the audience to right. that? Right. So this, this, the relationship with Celia and Shug, um, I definitely think the play kind of like you get more of that authentic relationship between the two of them um, and why they connect so much. The director, you know, wanted to, before he cast me, I, I'm, he wanted to make sure that I was comfortable with that. And my response to him was um, that I wanted to stay true to the story that Alice Walker wrote. And I think that it's part of Silly's story. And I think in terms of the backstory again, looking at the book again, like, I think many women has, have felt the way Silly has felt back then and still do today. Silly has had, she's had, she has had very negative relationships with men. She was, I mean, I, she was impregnated by her, the person who she thought was her dad. 14 years old, she had two children by this man. You know, then she was married into a very abusive marriage. This man was, everything you can think of, Silly went through. So, so in the book, she, she talks about how she was scared of men and how she didn't never looked at men in the eye. 
And the only love that she, she did have was with her sister, who was a woman. And then Sugar Avery comes into her life, and she's so impressed by Sugar Avery. And so, and then so Sugar Avery tells her things and makes her feel ways that she's never felt before. So I think in terms of the reason, the, the reason why she falls in love with Sugar is definitely based on her experiences that she's had with men. And I think that story that, that women today feel that way as well. And do you think it's critically important to, the, to Celie's, who Celie is? I definitely think it's part of her identity and who she is. And I think we definitely see that, um, she says in a play, she says to, to, sit, to Shug, she says, um, God's just another man. He's just another man, she says. Even Mr., she's been identifying him as a person. Mr. represents all the men in her life, Mr. She don't, then she says, oh, I didn't know his name was Albert. You know, she's, she's a man, another man. And then at the end of the play, she says to Shug, when Shug talks about how she likes this, this younger guy, she says, he's a man. You know, what, what, do you expect, what do you expect to happen? He's a man. So clearly, this is part of her identity and it's based on her experiences. Then she's then the very last song, and I'm here, she recognizes that real love, not real love, but like she will be fulfilled in life and she would really begin to live once she begins to first love herself. Mm -hmm. So she says, I don't need you to love me. I don't need you. I have my sister. I have my children. I have all these things that, that make me who I am and that are part of who I am. So um, that's when Sully begins to, I think, really begins to live when she really recognizes that, her, that self love, love of self is essential. Now, of course, uh, the book was assailed when it came out in 1982 and in the movie 1985 <laughs> about, uh, about the uh, violence and, and particularly mm -hmm. perpetrated by the men, the Absolutely. women appear to be, yeah. you know, at first glance, so very submissive, mm -hmm. and, and the men are dominant, and most right. of them are abusers. Yes, they are. Um, so a lot of people feel very strongly that this was male bashing, and mm -hmm. specifically black male bashing. And I'll say that my friend who accompanied me to this production said, I really like this story, mm -hmm. but boy, I get tired of I seeing do. our men portrayed in this way. I agree. I do. I felt that way. Some people have the perspective that, you know, art is art and people should be able to express themselves. They should not be, um, you know, prohibited from sharing whatever they want to share. But then I also feel artists, has, we have, as an artist and as a people, and some artists, people say, well, you know, you know, white people don't have to worry about those types of things. So why do we have to? Well, we do, you know, like that's how it is in this country. You know, we have to really worry about because we have different different obstacles that we, we deal with as a people and we have to be very careful as to what we present to our our children and our community. So that was definitely a struggle for me um, during the production, the portrayal of um, black men as being abusive. But again, I think in reading the book, I, I got a, a larger perspective of everything. And I realized that if you look at these times and the times that we're dealing with, like. I think women in, women in general was fighting for freedom and liberation at this time. It wasn't just something that black women were fighting for. It wasn't something that black men were only doing, you know? Um, in fact, I think on a lot of levels that black people were kind of emulating, the black men were emulating the behavior that they saw on the plantation towards the, towards the black women. So I, and I also feel like there's a, there is, a, there is a transformation that takes place um, with Mr. in the play. I think there's a transformation that takes place with Harpo, because Harpo is someone in the story who is very much unlike the other males in the story, where, you know, while, while Mr. is saying that Sophia is, woo, her family, crazy, her sisters are crazy. Why are they crazy? Because they outspoken, and they ain't dealing with your crap. That's why they crazy. But he loves to, he loves her. But I think that he's, he's, he's conflicted with the social constructs of the time in terms of the way women are supposed to be. And um, I think that's part, that, that is part of the struggle that leads Harpo and Sophia to, to part, but then at the end they come back together. And then if you, if you see them in the musical, you see how silly, I mean, Mr's kind of like almost jealous of his son and when he begins to plead and 
talk about Miss Silly's curse. Harpo's happy. Well, he, why he happy, you know? So I think that, um, I think that this story is a, a lot larger than that, at least, at least the musical in the book. So when, when people leave or when they see the production, what do you want them to you know, take away from it? I'm really connected to um, how, the way Silly, for me personally, because I've just been through so much in my lifetime, um, younger and being the first person in my family to go to college and mm -hmm. lived in a community and went to a high school where I was told that as a child that I wasn't college material, you know. Being able to, as, as Tupac says, Tupac Shakur. Tupac Shakur, he talks about the rose that grew from the concrete, you know, the, the, the sometimes, uh, in that case, he was talking about, like, in, in, in that particular quote, Tupac was talking about how, like, basically how everyone, just because a few people make it doesn't mean everyone can make it, you know, because of how oppressive the society is towards people of color. But on, a, on another way I'm, I'm looking at it is that, like, even though it's, you, can, you can achieve the impossible. You can make it, you can be successful, um, regardless of like your backstory and what you've gone through. Like it, it is possible. Like who would have thought Silly, she's, she went through so much and at the end she's reunited with her children, her sister. She's a successful businesswoman. She's happy now, you know? You can, you can, even though you've gone through a lot in your life, you can um, achieve peace. I think that that's important for people to, to see. The strength, silly strength. I hope people can, can be moved and inspired by a silly story. What does it feel like? This is a completely different conversation. You're not reading the reviews, so we okay. can't go there. <laughs> but your hometown girl made good. And this is a production that has people from all over the country. So yeah. I, I, I think people would be interested to know. The local girl got the lead. It <laughs> yeah. must feel your, your picture's on the front. Yeah. Does that feel good? <laughs> I think it feels good. And I think it's important because <laughs> most of the patrons who come to the show and support the theater are local. You know, so I can understand a director wanting to, when they take on a production like this, especially The Color Purple being the regional premiere, them wanting to, um, you know, make sure they cast the best people regardless if they're local or not. But I'm glad that I'm able to be the lead in this production. And, and, I, and I think that um, other people will be inspired, brown skinned people like myself, you know, to see that I'm, that I'm able to be a lead in such a major production. And I know it, it's just, it's, it's really transformed me and I look forward to seeing what the opportunities that I have coming up in the future.